Sadly, millions of abused women have heard these exact words and not lived to tell about it. Battered women like Melissa need support and counseling. From Florida. Oh, it's recognized for 30 seconds. Thank you. Battered women like Melissa need support and counseling so that they don't find themselves in these situations. Jailing them for 30 years is unacceptable. This is the beginning, not the uh, end. Along with NAACP and other groups, we will fight to make sure we turn over this horrible ruling and stand up to the legal system that persecute women who defend themselves. Those women need help, not prison. I yield back the balance of my time. John Lady yields back. The John Lady from North Carolina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I now would like to yield two minutes to the gentlewoman from Alabama, Congresswoman Roby. Gentlelady from Alabama, recognized for two minutes. Thank you so much to the gentlelady from North Carolina and uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker. I rise today um, in favor of the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. And um, just want to say, even after VAWA's enactment roughly eight years ago, one in four women still experience domestic violence during their lifetime. Moreover, uh, more than 2 million adults and 15 million children are exposed to such violence annually. And according to the Alabama Coalition Against Domestic Violence and the Alabama National Census Summary, in Alabama there are 834 victims served in one day, 187 hot call, hotline calls answered in one day, and 76 unmet requests for services. Um, these numbers are astounding and something must change. Um, organizations have reported that they have been unable to provide services for a variety of reasons, the top three being there's not enough staff, um, there's not enough specialized services, and there's not enough available beds or hotel vouchers to provide safe ha havens for victims and their children. As an original co-sponsor of the Violence Against Women Act, today I stand here supporting um, the Republican reauthorization. This bill brings greater accountability to the grant administration by ensuring uh, that funding will support and assist victims of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking, and will not be kept in the pockets of Washington bureaucrats. Individuals, whether women, men, or children, should be able to feel safe in their homes, and when they are not, should be able to have access to services that allows them to be removed from their abuser. Congress must put Washington politics aside and take action. I fully support this legislation, and I encourage my colleagues to join me. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlelady yields back. Gentleman from Colorado. I'd like to inquire if the gentlelady has any remaining speakers. Madam Speaker, we do have other speakers. I'll reserve my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentlelady from North Carolina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I now would like to yield two minutes to the gentlewoman from Wash the state of Washington, a member of our leadership, uh, Congresswoman McMorris Rogers. Thank you, Gentlelady from Washington, recognized for two minutes. Thank you, and I uh, uh, want to thank the gentlewoman for her leadership on this important issue. I rise today on behalf of my mother, my daughter, and every woman in America in strong support of H.R. 4970, the Violence Against Women Reauthorization of 2012. Each year there are over 200,000 victims of sexual assault. And while these numbers are devastating, since the enactment of the first Violence Against Women Act almost 20 years ago, the annual number of incidences has dramatically fallen, while the reporting rate has risen by 50%. The programs in the legislation are critical to continue the fight for equality and women's rights. The bill we will vote on today makes common sense reforms to ensure that more money actually benefits victims and is dedicated to eliminating the astounding backlog in rape kick test. Additionally, today we have the chance to support vital funding for rape prevention educational programs, youth victim services, and improvements to emergency and transitional housing services for victims. Since, since in its enactment, the Violence Against Women Act has enjoyed broad bipartisan support. This is not a Republican or Democrat, conservative or liberal issue. Together, we are uniformly standing against violence against anyone, particularly women. And I urge all of my colleagues to support their mothers, wives, daughters, neighbors, and friends by supporting H.R. 4970, the Violence Against Women Act reauthorization of 2012 a victim-centered bill 
that will extend vital programs that protect against and prevent both physical and mental violence. And I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Gentleman from Colorado. Uh, I'd like to inquire if the gentlelady has any remaining speakers. I, yes, Madam Speaker, we have one more. Uh, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. The gentlelady from North Carolina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to yield now one minute to the distinguished gentleman from Iowa, Mr. King. Gentleman from Iowa, recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the gentlelady from North Carolina for yielding to me, and and I and I rise to. Um, uh, I support the Violence Against Women Act. I did so when it was reauthorized in 2005, I believe it was, and, and we're here today in this debate on the rule, uh, not so much the bill. And I, I come to the floor to raise a point that constantly in the debate in the Judiciary Committee, there was an effort to divert the subject matter over to other things, sexual orientation, gender identity, immigration, a lot of focus on immigration. And one of the things that's happened to the bill since it left the committee was to change the language by, through this manager's amendment that's essentially deemed passed by the Rules Committee that changes the, the value of evidence of abuse of, a, of, say, a female immigrant who can get a U visa if she has determined to be have, having been victimized especially sexually victimized. That was a clear and convincing evidence standard. This rule that's written in by the Rules Committee changes it to the preponderance of evidence. I support the decision of the Judiciary Committee. It also changes the investigative component of this from USCIS, which are our trained investigators. They'll only see the evidence that's offered to them by federal prosecutors. So I'm going to oppose the rule and support the bill, and I appreciate this and yield back the balance of my time. Time's expired. Gentleman from Colorado. Well, I thank the gentleman from, from Iowa that we disagree on the bill. We uh, both can both agree that this is a uh, terrible rule, uh, and I encourage my colleagues to follow uh, the leadership of the gentleman from Iowa in opposing this bill. Uh, I'd like to inquire of the gentlelady if she has any remaining speakers. Uh, Madam Speaker, we are prepared to close. Gentleman from Colorado. I yield myself such time as I may consume. And the gentleman's recognized. Madam Speaker, uh, if we defeat the previous question, I will offer an amendment to this closed rule to make in order the bipartisan Violence Against Women bill that passed the United States Senate with 68 votes as an amendment offered by Representative Conyers, Representative Moore, and Representative Lofgren. Uh, if the House passes that, it will proceed to President Obama's desk. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to insert the text of the amendment in the record along with extraneous materials immediately prior to the vote on the previous question. Without objection. I uh, strong my, strongly urge my colleagues uh, to vote no and defeat the previous question and allow the Senate bill uh, that is passed with a bipartisan majority that actually uh, expands protections uh, for all women uh, to be considered by this body. Uh, here, Madam Speaker, uh, is a face of somebody affected uh, by the Violence Against Women Act from Colorado. Uh, her name is Sarah. Sarah uh, came to our country illegally. She was brought illegally, unbeknownst to her, um, by her American husband. Once in the United States, she was abused. She was isolated. She was effectively kept a prisoner in her own house by her husband. The first time she was violently beaten by her husband was when she went on a walk because her husband claimed that she had disobeyed him. She was trapped in a relationship where she was abused sexually as well as verbally for 14 years. She finally escaped with her son to safe transitional housing called Alternatives to Violence in Loveland, Colorado. Once there, she learned English and obtained temporary legal status through a U visa provided under the Violence Against Women Act. Today, I'm proud to say, Madam Speaker, she's a United States citizen and works as an advocate for other immigrant victims of domestic abuse. Stories like Sarah are inspiring and reinforce the reason that so many of us feel passionately to join across party lines to ensure that no domestic victim is left unserved. This Cantor Adams bill offers us a false choice between weakening and undermining protections in the Violence Against Women Act or maintaining the status quo. The American people understand that a vote for the Cantor Adams bill is a vote to roll back protections for all domestic and sexual violence victims and puts the safety of our most vulnerable domestic violence victims at risk. Immigrants, Native Americans, lesbian, gay, and bisexual victims all have historically faced many barriers to reporting sexual violence, but instead of removing those barriers, this bill under this closed rule creates new ones. Lesbian and gay survivors face particular obstacles to accessing the criminal justice system. 
Lesbian and gay survivors are often reluctant to report abuse, and when they do finally seek assistance, they frequently don't receive the support they need across life-saving services and resources. Studies tell us that gay and lesbian couples experience domestic violence at roughly the same rates as the general population. No surprise, but less than one in five gay and lesbian victims of intimate partner violence receive help through a service provider. This bill fails to provide the same vital protections for gay and lesbian families that have been overwhelmingly approved in the Senate bill. During the judiciary markup, I offered an amendment to restore these protections. But unfortunately, it was voted down, and this closed process even prevents the ability of members of the House to even consider or vote on adding these protections back in. Had the House Republicans allowed amendments on the floor today, I would have offered two amendments that I offered along with my colleagues, Representative Jackson Lee, Representative Lofkin, Representative Deutsch, and Chu, all were leaders in the judiciary markup that would have eliminated these atrocious provisions uh, from the bill. Some of the most egregious anti-immigrant provisions would destroy incentives to cooperate with law enforcement. People like Sarah, who bravely came forward to uh, report domestic violence, would face deportation after four years. Why would somebody come forward and report something if it can ultimately lead to their own deportation? All women deserve to be protected from domestic violence. Even women that have committed crimes, even women that have had civil violations like violating our immigration laws, even women who are lesbians, all women deserve to be protected by the Violence Against Women Act and that is what this bill is about. The Senate bill which passed on a bipartisan basis, including report from well over a dozen Republican senators, included these provisions. Abuse is abuse, whether it occurs against immigrants, whether it occurs against gay and lesbian Americans, or whether it occurs against Native Americans. Yet under this bill before us, a Native American woman living on a reservation that is raped and abused by a non-tribal member lacks protection and remains at risk of serious sexual and physical violence by her abuser. Under this underlying bill, gay and lesbian survivors and victims will struggle to get protective orders or be turned away by service providers just because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Just as alarming, this bill removes protections that currently exist for some of our nation's most vulnerable populations, battered immigrant spouses, restricting the ability of U-Visa holders from applying for permanent residence status and forcing them to face deportation. I strongly urge my colleagues to vote no on the bill and defeat the previous question, and I urge a no vote on the rule, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman's time's expired, and the gentlelady from North Carolina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm really, I agree with my colleague from Colorado. Abuse is abuse, no matter against which person it is. And nothing in this Violence Against Women reauthorization bill prohibits grant recipients from serving all victims of domestic violence. And I'm glad to hear my colleagues say that. Madam Speaker, House Republicans want to help women, particularly those who have been victims of violence and abuse, while also being good stewards of limited taxpayer resources. The 2012 Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act accomplishes these goals. In addition, the FY13 National Defense Authorization Act ensures that the men and women in our military have the resources they need while protecting taxpayer investments. Therefore, Madam Speaker, I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of improved congressional oversight and against special interest by voting in favor of this rule and the underlying bills. I yield back the balance of my time and I move the previous question on the resolution. The question is on ordering the previous question on the resolution and those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed will say no. no. The ayes have it, the ayes have it. The gentleman from Colorado. Madam Speaker, on that I request a recorded vote. The gentleman requests the yeas and nays. Yes. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having arisen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 9 of Rule 20, this 15-minute vote on ordering the previous question will be followed by five-minute votes on adopting the resolution, if ordered, and suspending the rules in passing H.R. 4119. 
This is a 15-minute vote, a 15-minute vote. On the agenda today, the House is debating the reauthorization of the 1994 Violence Against Women Act. It would reauthorize it for another five years through 2017. The Senate passed their version by a vote of 68 to 31, 15 Republicans voting in favor. They've been debating the rule for that bill, and also the, it covers the rule for later debate, a general debate on the defense authorization bill, but that will be much later today. This is the previous question. Democrats are seeking to amend the rule to allow consideration of the, uh, the Conyers-Moore-Lofgren amendment, an amendment that contains much of the language of the bipartisan uh, Senate legislation, the Senate bill that was passed uh, just in the last week or so. We have opened up our phone lines, as you may have seen and you see on the screen, to get your thoughts on the debate here in the U.S. House on the reauthorization. Here are the numbers to call. If you're a Democrat, it's 202-585-3885. Republicans use 202-585-3886. For all others, it's 202-585-3887. And if you've been a victim of domestic abuse, a special line set aside for you, that line is 202-585-3888. And please make sure that you mute your television when you call in. You can also participate by Twitter if you use the hashtag pound sign VAWA. We're keeping an eye on some of those, and we'll try to read some of those as well. This is a 15-minute vote, this previous question vote. Patricia is in Miami, Florida. Welcome to the conversation. Hello? Hi, Patricia. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm a victim. I feel like I don't know if I'm necessarily a victim, as they probably would say, but I do feel the isolation, and I feel the partiality, not about being gay, but being a woman. And it hurts because a lot of times women feel defenseless when they can't say anything about what's happening to them. They don't know who to turn to in most cases. So that's why I'm saying to you all, I am for the Democrats and their decisions against violence against women. CQ writes that the difference, one of the differences between the House bill and the Senate passed legislation is that uh, the House bill omits new protections for victims of domestic violence who are gay and lesbian, immigrants, and American Indians, and imposes new rules in domestic violence grants programs. Norman, Oklahoma, excuse me, Scottsdale, Arizona, next up, Republican line, and uh, Jan, hello. Yes. Jan, make sure you mute your television. You're going to feed back on us. Go ahead with your comments. Yes, I just want to tell you, I've been watching this. I can't believe it. I am, I'm for the violence act against the against women act i think it's wonderful and the republicans were going to do it but the democrats had to bring all the the lesbians and now uh, now illegal immigration into it they can't leave anything alone our country is going under and this is what they're worried about look at california we don't have to look at greece anymore america we don't have to look at spain anymore we're here. We have it here in our own country. California, what is it, the sixth um, biggest country basically in the whole world or seventh? And they, this is just what the Democrats have done to California. All this crap. They never – this is just absolutely ridiculous. I'm for this bill. The Republicans are for it. It's for women. Do you have to specify which women it's for? This is absolutely ignorant and you're looking at what's wrong with Washington just one up spend like this is the whole plan for the president the whole thing Republicans are against women that's Jan from Scottsdale Arizona here's Tracy Democrats line in Norman Oklahoma Tracy you're on the air yes hello my name is Tracy and I am from Oklahoma I am Democrat and I'm also a Native American woman and what have you thought about the dates, the uh, debate in the House so far? So far, I am. It, all women need to be protected under the Violence Against Women Act, and especially Native American women. You know, your sexual preference is one thing, and having to um, determine whether you're an immigrant or not is another. But we were here before anybody else. Native Americans have that right under Judiciary Act to be protected, especially our Indian women. I was for this Violence Against Women Act in 93, and I'm also for it now. Writing about the specific uh, language in the bill, 
on the on dealing with uh, Native American tribal police. The White House posted the other day on their blog that they write that the tribal police prosecutors in courts have had significant success in combating crimes of domestic violence committed by Indians in Indian country, but tribes cannot prosecute a non-Indian even if he lives on the reservation and is married to a tribal member. As a result, all too often, non-Indian men who batter their wives or girlfriends go unpunished. That's from the White House posting on their blog at whitehouse.gov. A tweet from Zoe Nicholson about the Violence Against Women Act. She writes, now on a 15-minute vote, and I am thinking in these 15 minutes, how many women have been assaulted? Here's Portland, Oregon. John calling in on our Republican line. Nope, he's off there. Manhattan is next. A Democrat call. This is uh, Barry. Go ahead. Um, hi, uh, this is Barry from Manhattan, and um, I have had, uh, I was a domestic violence victim, and uh, through the whole process, I have been discriminated against because of my uh, gender and my familial status, because I'm a, a single male. I have not been given a lawyer. Um, I was not, uh, I was denied a safe house. Um, I was put into a shelter system uh, in New York where uh, the money is being used uh, for hardened uh, felony convicts uh, as a halfway house, and I was brutally beaten by the security guards, and the city and the state have done nothing to protect or help me in any form whatsoever because I'm a man. And they even have laws that uh, will not uh, allow me uh, to back into the home, the rental property, even though the tenant of record was evicted. Um, they have rules uh, where I cannot go back in. Uh, the city has put forth such rules. We're taking your calls on the debate in the House on the renewal of the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. This is a first initial vote, a previous question vote. A vote on the rule is next, and the rule would allow for an hour of general debate for this and also for the defense bill to come, the programs and policy bill. Gwendolyn is next up in Chicago. Hi there. Chicago, you're on. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you so much. I'm calling because I'm a family court advocate in Cook County, Illinois, and they have removed court reporters from the courtroom, the family court, such as um, the warrants, custody cases. And what we're seeing here is that a great number of children are being removed from mothers as far as custody and sole custody is being given to fathers without really a good reason or any reason or basis at all given in the court loan documents or in the court orders. And I'm wondering, can this be classified as a type of uh, abuse or violence against women? Why in the courts have they removed the reporters, Gwendolyn? They classified it as a budget uh, item, that it was, you know, not in their budget, the Cook County government budget. Thanks for the call. Groton, Connecticut, next up is, uh, here's uh, Tasha on our Independence Line. Tasha in Groton, Connecticut. Hi there. Go ahead. Tasha, yes, I'm going to ask you to mute your television because it does uh, does feedback. Go ahead with your comments. Okay. Of course. Hi, I'm Tasha Avery. I'm 28. I'm calling from Connecticut. Um, I wanted to elaborate from Mr. Steve King from Iowa. He mentioned the Judiciary Committee had authorized the bill in 2005, and at that time we supported the bill or the rule. But when it was transferred over to the Rules Committee, um, some of the values had changed in regards to um, the immigrant um, victims and in regards also to the U visa, and I had questions on that. What's the latest status as far as you know in this bill? What does it say about uh, immigrant victims? of um, domestic violence, women, female immigrant victims. Of domestic violence, women, female. I'm going to let you go there, Tasha. It's uh, feeding back just a little bit. Thank you for participating. Citrus Heights, California, on our Democrats line. Go ahead. I'm going to put you on hold there, California. Folks, when you call in, make sure you mute your television so you won't feed back. Maria is in Los Angeles. Citrus Heights, we'll get to you in a minute. Maria in Los Angeles on our Republican line. Go ahead. Maria, go ahead. Hello. Hi there. You're on the air. Oh, um, yes. What I would like to say is that, you know, we have so much benefits over here in the United States. 
And this is the American country. But what happens is that everybody from other countries come over here, and then they, we have to help them. How come their countries can help them? Um, if when the things happen to us, and and we get abused here in 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 our country, where do we go? We have to stay here, right? So uh, I'll let you go there, Maria. Sorry about that. Citrus Heights, California. You're back on now. Go ahead. Oh, hello. Thanks for taking the call. Um, I found it very interesting they're using the the uh, acronym LGBT. Uh, well, for gays, wouldn't that mean that some males would be protected under the Violence Against Women Act? And also, as far as the uh, concern for the increase in expenditures for the uh, amassing of rape kits, it, that doesn't address the, the socioeconomical concerns. Like, people have talked about the need for the increased amount of, uh, you know, counseling and things like that. And also, that, that's only after the fact. Like, you, you also need things like you know, public awareness or training, like one representative talked about. Um, so I... I Along with some of the language for the you know increases in you know the defense budget and things like that, or the concerns on, for the, with the Democrats that there's language stating that we could end up going to war with Iran. Um, I really don't think the way this is written uh, takes into consideration you know anything to do with preventing domestic violence. Also, another thing I'll say is uh, there needs to be considerations for men. I mean, this far down the line, it's just, uh, of course, it has to be addressed, you know, violence against women, but there is also substantial favoritism and the, you know, just sort of the ability to manipulate, you know, things with this kind of legislation passing, where, you know, things like rights to see children, uh, favoritism shown after the escalation of any kind of feuding within the household. Appreciate your calling. Let's hear a Republican point of view from Portland, Oregon. John, thank you for getting through. Sorry we let you go earlier. Go ahead. Yeah, I would just like to say my name is John. I'm from uh, Portland, Oregon. I am in favor in the Violence Against Women Act. But I would like to say that I am absolutely appalled by the Obama administration and the Democratic Party's willingness to divide the country on racial lines for political gain. I think it's absolutely disgusting. Furthermore, I think that the Violence Against Women Act is good, but when you include all these other things in there, it's as if you're valuing one person's life more than another. And uh, I think that's wrong. The underlying dollar figure in the, again, this is an authorization bill, so it authorizes $660 million per year through fiscal year 2017. This is a five-year extension of the 1994 law. It uh, authorizes that money for grant and assistance programs, including law enforcement training programs and programs to help victims of domestic violence. Seattle is next, and this is Aaron, Democratic caller. Seattle, go ahead with your comment. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, it never ceases to amaze me, the irony of uh, Republicans who I would think pride themselves on, um, on their adherence to the Constitution and upholding the beliefs that our country was founded on, and then they can actually pick who gets civil rights and who doesn't, like... Gays and lesbians aren't to be considered Americans fully, like with the right to get married and whatnot. And then uh, everybody is going to blame the Democrats for not passing this bill. But how can you pass a bill that's flawed and doesn't recognize everyone equally? That How can they agree to that? Aaron is in Seattle. No, I'm sorry, Aaron, I'll let you go there. Oklahoma City is next. Dawn is on our Republican line. Oklahoma City, you're on. Hey, yes, good afternoon. Um, I am a woman, registered Republican from Oklahoma, citizen of the Cherokee Nation, 
I'm the executive director of the Native Alliance Against Violence, Oklahoma's Tribal Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Coalition. This H.R. 4970, the Canton-Adams um, House Resolution, is going to be detrimental to the Native Americans. And in the state of Oklahoma, we represent the second largest population for Native Americans. I realize that all of our um, congressmen, you know, are, are Republican, but they need to put their partisan politics to the side. They're repre- these are their constituents. This is not. This is not. And a line high. Hey, how you doing? Doing fine. Go ahead with your comment. Okay. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that, uh, yes, I, I, I believe that, uh, uh, you know, it should be, the, the, the bill should be revised more and to explicitly acknowledge protection of all women. That is, no matter what, your gender identity, whatever you consider yourself, <clears throat> it should be addressed, everybody in society, collectively. That, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll get one more call here in California. And we understand you were a victim of uh, domestic abuse? Yes. Go ahead. You'll be our last caller here. Okay. You're on the air with us. Go ahead. Um, I just feel this might be a good bill, but how exactly is this going to help um, women with that have suffered domestic violence? And you called in on our domestic abuse line. Has have you had a recent incident of uh, domestic abuse? Yes. Is it ongoing? No. What was the result of it? Did the abuser suffer legal consequences? Yes. Can you give us some more information about this individual's relation to you? Was it a, a husband or a boyfriend? Mm, that's boyfriend. And in terms of what you see in, in in the House here today, in the things they're talking about in this legislation, would you be in favor of the changes they're proposing? Yes. Thanks for taking the time to uh, to call us. Again, first vote here is on the previous question, and the vote on the rule is next. That passes, and there, there will be an hour of general debate on the uh, reauthorization of the uh, Violence Against Women Act. Also in the rule is allowing for an hour of general debate later on on the Defense Programs Bill, but that will be much later today.
On this vote, the yeas are 235, the nays are 187. The previous question is ordered. The House will be in order. The House will be in order. The House will be in order. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Madam Speaker, I uh, request unanimous consent to speak out of order for one minute. Je without objection, the gentleman is recognized. Is the mic on? There you go. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, yesterday was National Law Enforcement Memorial Day. Uh, this entire week is National Law Enforcement Week. Last year, we lost 163 police officers killed in the line of duty. So far this year, there have been 40 killed in the line of duty, protecting each and one of the communities that we represent in this great body. People like Tony Radulescu, a trooper in Washington State, a person who left his home that day with a hug and a kiss from his family, expecting him back home again that evening for dinner. Men and women in uniform leaving every day to go to work to protect our communities, expecting to return home. Some never do. It is right, it is proper, it is our duty, Madam Speaker, to today pause in this great body and pay tribute to those men and women who have sacrificed their lives for us so that we can all live safe. I ask for a moment of silence. Members will rise and the House will observe a moment of silence. Without objection, five-minute voting will now continue. The question is on the adoption of the resolution. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Opposed will say no. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it, the ayes have it. Speaker. Gentleman from Colorado. On that, I request the yeas and the nays. Yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having arisen. The yeas and nays are orders, and members will record their votes by electronic device. This will be a five-minute vote. A five-minute vote. Representative Dave Reichert there of uh, Washington, a former police officer, calling for a moment of silence. This week, the National Police Officers Week, the National Peace Officers Memorial Service was yesterday. President Obama spoke there. We covered that, and you can find coverage of that in our video library at cspan.org. This is the vote on the rule in the House on the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, a five-year extension of that act, reauthorization. It's a closed rule, which means no amendments can be offered. It'll provide for an hour of general, general debate. It also provides the rule for a general debate on the defense authorization bill for 2013. That, too, will get an hour of general debate, and they will have a separate rule for the amendments to that bill. But we do expect general debate on the defense bill later today.
On this vote, the yeas are 235. Mr. David Scott of Georgia. Mr. David Scott of Georgia votes no. Mr. Engel. Mr. Engel votes no. Mr. Ryan of Ohio. Mr. Ryan of Ohio votes no. On this vote, the yeas are 235, and the nays are 186, with one voting present, and the resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. And the unfinished business is on the motion, is the vote on the motion of the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Smith, to suspend the rules and to pass H.R. 4119 as amended, on which the yeas and nays are ordered. And the clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 4119, a bill to reduce the trafficking of drugs and to prevent human smuggling across the southwest border for deterring, by deterring the construction and use of border tunnels. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill as amended? Members will record their votes by electronic device. This will be a five-minute vote. A five-minute vote. The House approves the rule for debate on the renewal, the re reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. It will be an hour of general debate coming up. One more five-minute vote here. Also in that rule, the approval of uh, an hour of general debate on the defense authorization bill for 2013, but that debate will be much later this afternoon.
On this vote, the yeas are 416 and the nays are 4. Two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Alabama seek recognition? Madam Speaker, uh, I ask for unanimous consent that the Committee on Appropriations have until 6 p.m. on May 25, 2012 to file four privilege reports on the following. One, a bill making appropriations for the Department of Homeland Security for fiscal year ending September 30, 2013 and other purposes. A bill making appropriations for military construction, the Department of Veterans Affairs and related agencies for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2013 and for other purposes. A bill making appropriations for the Department of Defense for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2013 and for other purposes. And a bill making appropriations for the Department of State, foreign operations and related programs for fiscal year ending September 30, 2013 and for other purposes. Without objection. For what purposes does the gentleman from West Virginia rise? Uh, Madam, speak Madam Speaker, pursuant to Rule 22, Clause 7C, I hereby announce my intention to offer a motion to instruct on H.R. 4348. The form of the motion is as follows. I move that the managers on the part of the House at the conference on the disagreeing votes of the two houses on the Senate amendment to the bill H.R. 4348 be instructed to agree to, to agree to sections 1528 20017 to the extent that such section amends section 5323 of title 49 United States Code to provide subsection K relating to Buy America 33007 33008 and 35210 of the Senate amendment Gentlemen's notice will appear in the record Thank you for what purposes does the gentleman from North Carolina seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous.